couple of characters. We had two run-throughs. You can see you're going to see a bit of both of them. Um, so, what is the backstory to Biomutant? Okay, so we're in a post-apocalyptic world, right. and it's not like a bomb went off. It's like oil has seeped through, and oil is it, everything is dying. So that explains the floor right here, because it's quite dark. Like we're in like a forest or something, yeah. but you can see it's quite oily. Yes. Uh, and we've obviously straight away the first thing I had to do was was make a choice, and there's some sort of karma system. Yes. So. Interestingly, obviously Dave has got hands on with the game, but I'm sort of the one that saw the presentation, which is why the two of us are doing this. So it has a karma system, and it's a very easy to understand karma system. It's the very, it's, I'd call it the red and blue system. It was literally like a black and white, sort of yin, yin and yang kind of a thing. Minus 10 or, or plus 10. And this does affect the story, because your karma will affect how people see you, the options you have when you are talking to people. Okay. Um, and of course, because the ending is very open. So, for example, um, there are six tribes, okay. and you, know, you can choose to unite them or destroy them. You can choose to become some scary big boss. And again, all your karma has an effect on all of this. So, what what is this game? Like, if we break it right down, it's kind of an open world adventure. Adventure with kind of like it's quite in depth combat. I, Rob said. Devil May Cry Combat. Devil May Cry Combat. That's what I was looking for. It's like, it's, it's about combinations. It's about, you know, it's not just like your attack is square. As you, I think you will have seen in that sort of tutorial section, there are loads of different button combinations. Uh, all the moves have names. So I think you can chain them together. You know, you can knock people up into the air so that you can do more damage to them. Like, the, the combat is actually very, very deep. Yeah. Um, what the, the part of the game that we played is quite linear because it's the, it's the very opening, uh, certainly of this build anyway, so... This is a special piece of code that has been made for presentations. Right, this for is presentations. What, so this part of the game is what me and Rob saw at Gamescom. Right. In fact, anyone who saw this at Gamescom as a member of the press, this is the section they saw and said, this is just us playing it and doing it our way. But if you have seen the trailer, or you might even see some at the end of this, this video, it's actually a huge open world. So you, you, you might not get it from this video that we've played, that we've put together, but the game is actually opens up into a huge open world. Four by four kilometers above ground doesn't include the underground. Did you say four by four kilometers? Four by four kilometers. I watched my old video back. Wow. I've okay. also have it, I also have it written down. And there was there's loads of terrain, you know, there's loads of environments. Like yes. there's, there's a desert, there's like sort of tundra, yeah. there's lush forest and stuff. So it's, it's like, it's a really interesting game. In fact, I think you maybe described it as Jack and Daxter meets Horizon, yes. Zero Dawn, yeah. which, um, which, which is, is a combination that I didn't know I wanted until I, was, I heard about it. Exactly. Until I was told that, I was like, yeah, that sounds amazing. So it, our main character doesn't talk. Uh, no. Those watching now, you'll hear a narrator, and it's the narrator that sort of gives you the story. So if you pick something up, it'll be like, and then he picked up the sword. But as with your things like your karma, that can also affect the kind of the way the narrator speaks, so it's quite dynamic to what you're doing and how you're doing it. I really liked it actually. Uh, you'll see in a bit we get into a conversation, and the narrator kind of describes the character's feelings about what's going on as well. It's sort of like his inner thoughts almost. It's a really like clever sp system. Uh, you will have just seen that we picked up some ammo. Yep. And this is like what we're about to see, or not actually, are we about to see it? Not quite yet. So I've got some ammo that's like, um, you know, it, there are different kind of powers, like lightning power or, I mean, just talking about the ammo, there are different kinds of, uh, what's the elements that I'm yes. making? Elemental damage. So <laughs> right now I've got sort of electric, but I know there's radiation as well. I'm sure there are others. Um, what we're doing here is scavenging for loot, which is going to be really important because right. you can use all this stuff to make weapons and armor, uh, which is a big part of it's the game, actually. It's a huge part. So Nathan here, Nathan made this video. He wanted to zoom in on, on our new helmet there. Was I that don't all know, that was? I that don't was know just Nathan why zooming in on that the was, helmet? That's what he wanted to do. Fine. Yeah, that's, that was his happy. thing. Um, he was interested in that. So um, the game itself has this a tree of life, and the tree of life is dying. And if the tree of life dies, so does humanity. So you need to cure its roots. Now, by playing the game and doing the quests, you will start to cure the roots of a tree of life. And every time you successfully cure one of the roots, the percentage chance of you saving humanity at the end of the game increases. So, for example, if you only have a 10% chance of saving humanity because you've only cured a tiny part of the roots, at the end of the game, it'll, the game will literally RNG on whether or not you've saved humanity. Oh, so you the can more, still do it? You can still do it. Right. The more the, the tree of life that you cure, the better the, the percentage that you'll actually save humanity. But you can still lose. But you can still lose. Oh, man. And the story's also open. So, for example, if you've played it and you've been a complete ass the whole time, 
and you have low karma, you'll get you know a different ending than if you played it and had good karma. That's quite. That's pretty interesting. That's a really interesting idea, actually, because you, yep. you're used to making all the right decisions and getting the good ending. The yep. idea that you can, you know, you can do your best to to heal the tree of life and still lose is kind of interesting. Or do your work, you know, not really care about it, but still, it's, actually, it comes it's, good. It's, it's kind of an it. interesting idea that I'm, I'm really interested in. Uh, so yeah, we're seeing some more combat, and I think we might have seen the first uh, of a couple of powers. So. Your character has several powers um, which you can use. I think we've seen the first one, which is kind of like a, it's that one there, which is like a confusion power, uh, which can turn enemies against each other. They turn them to your side. I don't know that they're necessarily on your side, actually, but they definitely turn against their yes. friends, um, and which is really good for just dis disrupting, you know, because they do get quite t together. There's quite large numbers of them, so you can turn those against them. That's the first power that we've learned. Um, you can see I've got a dodge now, which I'm using incredibly badly. This guy in the middle, he's not actually too difficult to kill, but I decided to go for the ads first, which was maybe a mistake. I always go for the ads first. I, I just want well, to be able to concentrate to on the sense. boss. I, yeah, thought no, I, I, could easily, I thought I could easily you know, outmaneuver his, uh, his barrel throws, but actually he was surprisingly accurate with them, or I was surprisingly bad. I, I'm not sure. You're he not staggered bad. here. Yeah, I know. I'll let, I'll let you decide for yourself. Uh, he's dead here, so that, that's good. And I like this nice, you get this nice the slow mo down. finisher, which is pretty cool. So there are actually there's two types of powers. There's bio and there's psi. I didn't know that. So bio is physical and psi is a bit like X-Men powers. We're going to see another one of them here. So I'm going to, again, another one, uh, which is an electric shock. Yes. Uh, so you get a little. Actually, no, I'm not. This is this is the this is one of the psi powers. I guess this yeah. is telekinesis. So you can pick things up, uh, and you know, throw it into other stuff. Just do yeah. damage to it, uh, which is useful. It's not just enemies. You can also use it on you know like barrels and animate objects like and things you just like, like that. Like guys are like ragdolling in the air. Like I know. You? He didn't have a chance, did he? Nope. He was not expecting this. That slow mo again, which is super cool. Again, for anyone who's tuning in, uh, this is us. We played this. Literally, we made this video yesterday. Uh, um, it is Dave playing, which is why we're not playing it live. The game is very early in development. It's great that we got code, but we, because of that, we can't play it live. It is pre-alpha. This is a special build made for showing like at events. So you can tell it's me playing because I'm not that good. <laughs> you know, I will say the guy who did demo it from the studio when I saw it at Gamescom did do really well. He did better. Well, the guy, the developer did better, Holly. That's what you tell. That's what you're telling me. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, okay, that's fair enough. Um, so different kinds of enemies here, like a, another big guy, but he had a shield. You have to break the shield before you can do any damage. I don't think I don't think he can succumb to any of your powers until you've taken down his shield, uh, which makes sense. I think you can shoot these barrels. You can actually uh, you can see it sort of auto locked on. I should explain that there's a ranged attack and a melee attack. So you've got a sword and guns, um, and you can lock on with the right stick. So you can choose which enemy you're attacking at, you know, which time. Mm. I am not good at it, and as I said, as well as Rob described it as, as uh, Devil May Cry. This is where you can see the, the, the Devil May Cry style combat. You know, it's getting them into the air, getting to the combos, exactly. mid combos, switching out to guns, bringing in the two-handed. Exactly, it's mixing it, as you say, between the range and the melee. And you, when you get really good with this game, I think you're going to see some amazing combos. You're going to see some really ac acrobatic kills. Uh, and people just doing crazy things. I mean, I'm still learning the powers there. I just picked that guy up for a laugh because, you know, just because I could. Well, one of the other powers you just saw there when you saw the moths on the screen, that's one of your other side powers. You spew moths. Yeah, that's the confusion the, sort of power yeah. that kind of like takes them over or uh, I'm not sure what exactly what, how you describe it. Now we're going to see something which is really, really interesting which we were sort of talking about earlier, this is the workshop where you take all those parts that you've collected yeah. so far in the game and you put them together to form uh, a weapon of some kind. So I'm doing it randomly here. Uh, at the moment, that's all you can do, I think, is just randomize your weapon. You just press triangle. It puts all the parts you've got into, it, together in different ways. Uh, and you can see all the different stats that you've created. I mean, you can guess I'm going to choose this, this weapon. I'm pretty sure I choose something like that because it just looks so incredibly cool. Um, but yeah, so you're rolling Gosh, different nice. stats all the time. This is what I'm talking about. I mean, I think that's a bit of a stop sign, uh, maybe a bit of like a chainsaw or something. Wrench. Oh. Yes, I want that. So that's my two-handed sword that I've made. And that's just from all bits that I've found throughout the world, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. You can do the same with ranged weapons. 
Uh, and again, so it's just using all the bits you found, just hitting triangle, putting them together in different ways or different parts. And you can see the stats on the right, um, depending on what you're looking for, you know, whether you want to go for high damage, high fire rate. Oh, or look how like cool that. that looks. And there it is. So now I've, that weapon is on my back. We are going to learn the third power now. Yep. This has to be one of the bio powers, I guess. I don't know how to describe this. What's it called? It's called Fungi Mush Mutation or Fungi Mush, maybe. Yeah, that's on my. This is on my Gamescom list. Okay. Do you want to? Do you want to talk about it? Yeah. So with the fungi, you can use it in sort of two different ways. So you can put it down like this and use it to help you traverse the world, find secret, gain access to new places. But then you can also use it in battle as well. Yeah. So you can actually use it against it's enemies. It's so mad in battle. I, I've got to be honest, I really enjoyed that this power can be used for problem solving. So there, I noticed that there was a chest over there. I used them to That's jump so over cool. the, you know, to jump over the gap and get to the, the, uh, the chest of loot. I think that, that's my favorite way to use this power. In combat, it's just absolutely mad yeah. because the, the mushrooms just grow up underneath people and just throw them into the air. And if you've got a couple down, they just bounce between them. They're completely helpless, which is pretty uh, fun. This is the last power that I was talking about, the key spark power, which is just basically lightning. Yeah, and it looks just I love that it's sort of, I love the zap zap and they, you can sort of have the x-ray when you're zapping them. It it's looks cool, really isn't cool. it? I, they, I don't know how to describe this art style. There's a number of things. I love that they have like this sort of, you know, comic book style pow, zap stuff that comes up. So this is actually, uh, this is one of the, this is the first sort of like friendly character we, yeah. we've seen. I think it's the only one we're going to meet in this video. Uh, the guy in the wheelchair there. Now, what is his name? He's got a great name. It's something like out of date. I think he's called out of date. <laughs> uh, and I'm trying to save him. So these must be. This must be one of the tribes you're talking about. Yes. We've got to, you can see I've got to just defeat these tribe members to save him. He's having a bit of a, a hard time. He's having a bit of a bit of a battle of his own. I'm starting to get to, to grips with the the combat here. It start, I'm going to be honest. It started a little bit button mashy. But um, there's the there's the mushroom power. It see, knocks him into, up the, into air. the air for a combo. Stunning, lovely. So I can't wait to see this game as it progresses. Because if this is how the combat is looking pre-alpha, it is going to be exactly delicious. And, and as I said, as you know, forward. I've started off quite button mashy. When you understand the powers and how you can chain them all together, and, and you understand the enemies, and maybe you know you know that you need to mind control that one and stick that one up in the air and take him out of the action. People are just going to do amazing things. So yeah. that was uh, basically now I've made, made my new friend. I think we're learning basically here about healing the tree of yes, life. Yes, this is where he teaches you how to heal the tree of life. I've got a different mask there. It's the weirdest mask. I don't know uh, why I've made that choice. Um, and so you can see there's conversation tree. This is the RPG yeah. element. There is... There is conversation with the NPCs, you know, and then there's the karma system as well. Uh, as you said, it's not just be good and you win, be bad and you lose. No, it's not like that. The, the little things called nanos, they're what you're trying to find. They're the things that can eat away at the rot that is killing the tree of life. Yes. So you need to find the nanos. And there's different ways of doing it. Um, there are five routes to heal, and then each one of those breaks down even further. Right. So there could potentially be ten parts to one five. Got you. One of the five. So we've made it out of the look. underground. This is our first sort of look at the open world. It's got an amazing skyline. Look you can see planet. the planet with the rings. It's just amazing. Now we were told that if you can see it out here, you can walk to it. Right. So it's in that four by four kilometer square. This, and then like this, you said, there's underground as well. This is amazing. This, I mean, Mark your territory, it said. I, was, I don't know what I was expecting, but I guess he is an animal. So he's marked his, his territory in the only way he knows how, with some sort of uh, bioluminescent liquid, shall we say. <laughs> You're so polite, Dave. I know. And uh, I'm pretty sure this was basically the end of the area that I was able to see. Yes. Get a, a, a very tantalizing look, sadly, at the open world. A very tantalizing look at this terrifying beast. Cerberus. Uh, which I didn't fight. Uh, and I think we're going to see maybe a little bit of the outro, which is bits of the trailer, possibly. And you can get an idea for the, the variation of the world. It looks absolutely incredible, and I can't wait to get, to get out there I and explore it. Either. I mean, there's so many un unanswered questions here. Like, there's, there's these vehicles. I think we might see, like, a hand, hand vehicle, vehicle, like a, a clockwork hand. I think there's going to be some, uh, some like, problem solving uh, with... You see, like, a sundial in a minute. It's... Absolutely. I, I mean, what is that? Is the sundial, which I'm hoping is some sort of problem solving? Dinka totter. I know. But There's yeah, an airship. Look at that. 
I mean, we're really lucky, like I said, we haven't been able to play it live because it is still so early in development, but everything you've just seen prior to this, that's we playing the trailer now, was Dave playing back at the Access office. Yeah, so exactly. we, were, we were so happy that we were able to show that. Again, it's pre-alpha, the game is so early in development. It's really ambitious. Yes. It's really ambitious, and I really, I want to, I want to follow it quite closely. There are I, mechs in the game. I mean, of course, what, what there is are. Going I mean, there's on. also giant worms.